Hello and welcome to this channel that, as you may guess from the name of the channel, it's all about computational social science. And in this video, in the next videos, we will try to analyze this subject from different point of views and also looking for different concepts and topics. Let's say sometimes more on the theoretical part and some other times more on the practical part, looking for softwares and environments for making, for example, agent-based simulations, as we will see today with NetLogo. So just to give you a super quick overview of what we're going to see today, I already have NetLogo open. So NetLogo looks like this. I'm not going to explain anything for now, it's just to make you understand the power of NetLogo. And in just few minutes, once you learn how to make it, you will, you will be able to already make a simulation like this. And you see here we have some uh, little ships, some wolves. And um, when we want to run a simulation, we just go. And then we see that we have wolves eating ships, ships reproducing, wolves reproducing and we have all the data here and we see what's happening and nobody cares right now. But in any case, what I think it's amazing is that really in just few minutes, you're able to run a really complex simulations with all the graphical support that you may want. So today we're gonna have a really quick overview about NetLogo. And um, in the next videos, probably we will go deeper about NetLogo or also let me know in the comments if you have some specific topic that you would like to address. Actually, I'm not an expert about computational social sciences. I started studying it relatively recently, but I'm really interested. I'm studying quite a lot the topic and also I will present many topics and let's say discoveries that I will find. I mean, for me it would be like something new. I know that for people in the topic, probably most of this stuff will not be new. Also at the moment, I am studying also ModGen from Statistics Canada, and that's much more complex, but I think it's also more powerful. So if by any chance you really feel like you would like a tutorial on ModGen, Maybe I will need some time more, but I think we will come with something on that. So talking about that, let's start with net logo. I go small again. So I think probably you already installed net logo. If you don't, don't worry. It's super simple. Just go on Google, write net logo. Usually the first result is the right one. So it's this from CCL northwestern.edu. You click here and you just download and install. It's really straightforward. I guess there is nothing more to say. Then once it's installed, now I'm going to close it and let's open it. So as I mentioned today, we're not going to write the code or anything like this, but still we should be able to see some stuff. Also, wait a second, I will bring me down here okay so you may see okay so probably when you open it looks like this maybe it looks like something else you may have already some kind of um, simulation already loaded it depends don't worry in any case what you can do is just you go here on file and then you have models library so here you have all different models that are preloaded. If you really love shortcuts like me, you just go Control M on Windows or um, I think it's Command M on Mac, no idea. Okay, and you open the models library. So here you can see you have really a lot of different models. Here today we are going to take one that as far as I understand is one of the most common use and is this wolf sheep predation. 
So it's in biology and then you go in a wolf sheep predation. Then you can go and open it. Okay, so as you see, we have a black screen here and lots of buttons and apparently we cannot even go here. We cannot press go. So for now, we're going to just test some things and here, this black square, as you may see, is pretty much the world in which everything will happen. NetLogo is based on 2D simulations, so you don't have 3D space. I think they have also some kind of beta for 3D, I'm not sure, but most of the stuff will happen in 2D, and in many cases is even enough. So in order to set everything here, you will go here and click on setup and everything will appear. Now, I know that a lot of people would be like, yeah, I really love the buttons, but I want to write something. We will go there in a while, but just to know what's happening. If you want to write stuff as a command, you can write it here, but not getting into that now. And also, if you want to know what is driving everything in this simulation, you will have it here in code. But again, we're not going to discuss it right now. It's just for you. So as a programmer, since we are used to see codes, I don't know, many times I feel uncomfortable with buttons without knowing where is the code. Okay. I don't know. Maybe it's just a mental issue. <laughs> okay. So once we press the setup button, everything is initialized. And to run the simulation, we can just click go. And we have that the simulation is going. We have our ships, our wolves, and everything is going. And then at a certain point, it will stop, or maybe it will go on forever, it depends. Okay, now if we want to go again, we can press go, but it doesn't work because we have to initialize it again. So now I'm going just to make an overview of the different buttons and things. So we are more confident for the next time when we will jump into the code part, or maybe we we'll, should use the command center. I don't know. Let's see what we will do next time. But for now, let's stick here. So again, probably you're already used to some other approaches in which you already use buttons, codes with buttons. I used LabVIEW that has some scheme like this. So it's not too weird for me. But in any case, all these sliders actually represent something that usually is written right here. So you can see that if we put the number, initial number of wolves at 243, we go set up, we start with a lot of wolves and we can go and we can see how the simulation then happens again. Ooh. Okay, never mind. Um, what else? We have sliders here. We have graphs here that tells you all the values. For example, we have the curve of the sheep, the curve of the wolves. Now we can see that the wolves apparently are rising and the sheep are decreasing because they're being eaten by the wolves room and the wolves ate everyone and then they die and so they go to zero disappear okay then we have also set up again we have here the counters in which we have the number of sheep wolves the number of grass maybe this we will see it later and then we have also some other parameters like this to um to know how often the the wolves will reproduce how often the sheep will reproduce and here we have some internal parameter that is the energy we can turn it off or on and we see when we turn it on we have that wolves have this number and maybe we have to slow slow it a little but if you see wolves are going to lose energy unless they eat so Let's go a little slower. Okay, you can see 13, 11, 10, 9, 2, this one 8. Okay, 
Okay. So here we have pretty much all the buttons for controlling the simulation and also all the graphs and counters that actually are telling us the information about the simulation. Now, I think all of this part is pretty straightforward, but still it's better to have it in mind what's going on. Another thing is here we can have this bar that actually is telling us how um, fast the simulation is going to run from slower to normal speed, faster. Maybe we can go again and see how we can make it really, really slow or maybe we can make it super fast. Vroom. Okay, also sometimes, for example, let's say we start with, okay. Sometimes maybe your PC can have some problem in processing. So let's go like this. Okay. And at a certain point when there are too many ships, maybe your PC can start having some problems if you display too much information. So what you can do is go again. And especially if I go at normal speed, I think at a certain point you will see that it start looking like slowing down. Okay, no, this time it didn't work, but many times my PC has pr some problems. So what you do is like you click here on view updates and actually the simulation is running without showing anything. So I go set up, go, and you see it just run the simulation without displaying anything. And this one is, mostly to help you to save all the graphical memory and um, all the graphical computation that might be quite heavy sometimes. So it can help you quite a lot. I think from all this graphical part, we show pretty much everything. Maybe next time we will discuss a little more about the space. Uh, especially the command center, and maybe we'll start discussing a little more about the code. Let me know in the comments, wait, I became big again. Let me know in the comments if there is anything specific that you want to see, to analyze in, with better details. In the meanwhile, just behave, have fun with the simulation, and actually see you next time.